there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Well, welcome everybody to the Must Read Alaska show. I'm your host, John Quick, coming to you live from somewhere in Alaska. And man, you have a special treat today. We have a very special guest today, Will Witt, who has amassed over 700 million online views. He has uh, been a part of PragerU. He runs uh, his own paper. He's the editor, editor-in-chief of his own paper in Florida. And he's written a couple uh, bestsellers but guess what? He is coming to Alaska. So without further ado, welcome to the Must Read Alaska, Will. Thank you so much for having me, man. Excited to be here. Well, I'm excited that you're coming up to Alaska and you're speaking at an event that we'll talk about here in a second. But you've been able to have you know, some pretty massive influence with um, the younger crowd here in the U.S. And I think my first question to you is this, Will. You know, what does somebody do to make a difference? You know, um, somebody's going to look at the work that you've done, you know, hundreds of millions of views, you know, best-selling books, you are the editor-in-chief of your own paper, and they kind of get overwhelmed of like, how do I just make a difference in my own community? So what's advice that you'd give to somebody who's, you know, got full-time jobs and they're a stay-at-home dad or a soccer mom and kids practices and all that kind of stuff? How do you still make a difference in today's political world? I agree. It can be overwhelming. Sometimes I look at my own life and think, wow, this is quite overwhelming as well. So I, <laughs> I understand the sentiment. I think the most important thing that people can do is like Jordan, Peter said, Jordan Peterson said, is to make sure your own room is clean before you try and go and fix the world. You know, it's like a, 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 a standard of integrity that people need to have. I think right now with the political world we have that's so crazy and basically no one trusts any politicians on the right or the left – I think what we're missing in this world is people with just backbones who actually stand up for what they believe in and do what they're going to say. The The essence of integrity is doing the right thing even when no one's watching. Mm-hmm. And this means that when you are going out into the world, even if you're only affecting one person or even just helping yourself be a better person, then you're doing something good. You know, So many people always ask me and say, well, when is the presidency going to change? When's America going to change? When's my neighborhood going to change? When's politics going to change? But no one's ever asking, when will I change? And if we really want to be that, that good stand-up person and do something that really matters, it's about fixing the things in our own life and putting those things as a priority and living as, the, as God intended, really. And if you do that, then you can really start to make a difference. Imagine if we had millions of people in America who are going headfirst into their lives thinking, what can I do to make myself the best pers- person that I can be and live uh, for God? If we had that, the countries, or the, the issues in this country would, would dissolve and fix themselves. How, how important to you does faith play a role in what you do and, and, and how why do you think that that's important and, and should it be important to folks in, in America still? Well, faith is the most important thing in my life. As I started out in, in politics, I actually started out my life as an atheist for most of my life up until about the age of, I don't know, about 20 years old. Then I got into conservative politics and was kind of thinking about things, but wasn't really too into it. So I was political without having faith. And then about two years ago, I actually got baptized. And what you come to realize is that the faith needs to drive the politics, not the politics driving the faith. And once you start to realize that and realize that all of this is according to God's plan and God's will, then we can start to actually make some changes in this country that are beneficial to people. When you are trying to solve these these issues taking place in America, like especially with young people, the lack of meaning, the nihilism, the the no sense of purpose that young people have, and we're trying to fix this through the Republican Party, that's not the way you do it. You don't fix a a lack of meaning in someone's life through political ends. You fix it through giving them actually some sort of meaning, and that meaning comes through God. This is why the left is so intoxicating and and attractive to young people because leftism is a religion in itself that it gives young people a sense of purpose and meaning where it tells them you are the savior to go and help this, this minority group or to help save the world from climate change or to stop the spread of COVID by getting 10 times jabbed, whatever it is. 
it gives them that hero complex where they feel like they have that meaning. And so if, if we really want to take back the culture, and especially young people, we need to instill in them that meaning that comes through faith in God and a real conviction of faith, not just I go to church on Easter and Christmas some years, and, and that's about the extent of it. It has to be real conviction when it comes to, to, comes to Christ. So you are coming to Alaska. Tell us, have you been to Alaska? Tell us about this event you're coming to speak at. No, so this is my first time coming to Alaska, actually. I'm, I'm beyond excited. I've been to 48 out of 50 states now, and this will be my second to last one. And then I have Rhode Island as well. So I'll, I actually am planning a trip to Rhode Island as soon as I get back from Alaska just to, to round it all out. Nice. But uh, the event should be really wonderful. I've heard that the people of Alaska are going to be incredibly warm to me, and, and despite the cold temperatures maybe, and uh, just a place where – it's a completely different culture than I think that I've experienced. You know, I lived in California for the last five or six years and to then go to a place like Alaska, that is basically California flipped on its head is something I'm really looking forward to. So I, I can't wait to be, be up there and, and speak to everyone. Awesome. Well, the, for folks that are interested, the uh, Jim Minnery is putting on an Alaska family council event and we'll put the link in the description here. I think you can still buy tickets for it. And so if folks are interested in hearing uh, will come and speak at that event. Um, you know, click on the description in the podcast, get yourself a ticket because they're probably going to sell out very fast. Uh, will, last question to you is this, what has been the most impactful thing that you've done in your life so far and why? It's a big question. I would say one of the biggest things I ever did was get my Eagle Scout. Not a lot of people know this, but I'm an Eagle Scout got it when I was 16 years old. And the reason why it was so impactful for me is one, because the scouts, uh, just politically, the scouts are no longer what they uh, used to be. Now they're just called scouts. They like girls in. Uh, it's a, a shell of the organization that it once was. But for me, I grew up without my, my father in the picture. He was in prison for most of my life. And my grandpa is the one who put me through scouts and was really a male role model for me. And because of the scouts and because of what I learned there in leadership and, and team building and community and, and masculine values that you learn within the Boy Scouts, it changed my life forever. And it was the number one thing that, that my grandpa was most proud of me for. He was quite the, the, the hard guy on me. He was always very pushy and, and made sure that I did everything to the T. He was a Navy guy and his impact in my life and, and that with the Scouts has been the most important thing for me. I wouldn't be doing what I was do am doing now if it wasn't for the Boy Scouts and my grandpa, who unfortunately passed uh, last spring, just about a year ago from from this month. And he was just the most amazing man, and, and Boy Scouts was the most amazing experience, making me the man that I am today. So I would say getting my Eagle Scout was the number one thing in my life, and and I recommend all young men to find some sort of some sort of community that is going to give them a sense of purpose and leadership that that they can really latch on to. It was wonderful for me. Awesome, Will. Well, any last minute thoughts here before we head off? Um, I want to be mindful of your time. You'll be up here um, in a couple of weeks doing the event. Um, any last minute thoughts? I'm just so grateful for for being able to come up to Alaska and, and speak with everyone. And thank you again for having me on the radio show. And you guys can check out my website, theflstandard.com, to get all of the news you need about anything in Florida and DeSantis and all my social media at The Will Witt. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks so much, Will. We'll put all those links in the uh, podcast description. We wish you nothing but success. We're excited that you're coming up to Alaska, and we'll see you when you get up here. Until next time, I'm John Quick from somewhere in Alaska. Thanks, Will. Thank you.